What up, potty people, and welcome back to Clipped. I'm Eric, your host, and Clipped delivers top-notch podcast production tips, resources, industry insights, and podcast education, all aimed at making your podcasting life easier. My goal is to help you start, grow, and monetize your podcast. Today, I'm diving into a topic that's crucial for everyone, whether you're a new podcaster, maybe you're a seasoned podcaster, but some of these tips that I'm going to be giving you today can help you on your journey. So, common podcast mistakes to avoid, let's give it a go. First mistake is a gear mistake that's using a condenser microphone. And so when you're podcasting, you want to use a dynamic microphone. And I've covered this in detail, but condenser microphones are really sensitive and they're going to pick up everything in your room. The sound of your air conditioning, the sound of your feet squeaking on the floor, the sound of your chair. Condenser microphones are great for recording music and maybe even recording podcasts if you're in a professionally treated studio with a sound panel and it's acoustically designed to make you sound great, then you can maybe use a condenser microphone. But for 95% of you, you're going to want to choose a dynamic microphone because those are going to isolate your voice. They're going to pick up the sound that's just coming right in front of them and you're going to get that nice broadcast tone. So first mistake, using a condenser microphone, you're going to want to avoid that. And for a list of my favorite podcast microphones, check out the show notes. I'm going to be linking to a bunch of stuff there that you can check out. Okay, mistake number two, not using a microphone at all. And I do see this more with like people that are guests on podcasts that maybe aren't like too savvy in the podcast space, or maybe they don't do a ton of interviews. And that's them talking directly into their laptop. That's a huge no-no. At a very minimum, use a headset. You could use like Apple AirPods, although I prefer wired headsets. So find yourself a wired headset, maybe even the one that comes with your smartphone. And if you're doing this as a host, that's a huge no. You need to get a podcast microphone. And if you can't afford one at the very least, get on a headset. In fact, I don't even really do interviews unless the person has a microphone. If you're interviewing people and you've noticed that some of your guests don't have microphones, that's something you can implement. Hey, don't let them on the show unless they have some kind of microphone, some kind of headset. You can be clear about that. It's not too much to ask. Nowadays, people are getting better at this and chances are they have something that they could use rather than just talking into their computer speakers. Okay, mistake number three, recording via Zoom. Zoom is great for work calls, for conferencing, for getting together with your team, brainstorming, planning, all types of uh, team meetings, but it's not great for podcasting. With Zoom, you're going to get that digital sound. The audio is going to sound compressed and crunchy. Um, There's also going to be like little digital hiccups and blips, kind of like circa AOL back in the day. You're going to get that weird sound and you're also going to get dropouts. Someone might straight up be talking and then you might lose them for like 30 seconds. So you're going to want to avoid Zoom. The platform you're going to want to use is Riverside and that's riverside.fm. Uh, Riverside is designed for podcasting, record high quality audio and video. I've covered this at nauseum, but I do have a promo code. So if you want 20% off any Riverside plan, use promo code clipped at checkout and you can get 20% off any individual plan. If you're not using Riverside, let's say you're doing a solo cast at home, record into some kind of audio production software. You could even record into QuickTime or if you're more like hands-on, use a handheld recorder. Just do not record via Zoom. Okay, mistake number four, not being on all platforms. Most of us probably listen to podcasts on Apple or Google, but there's several other platforms out there. There's Google Podcasts, there's iHeart, TuneIn, and so you need to make sure you're on all of those. Oh, and obviously YouTube. You want to be on as many places as possible so that you can get discovered. Yes, the majority of your listeners are going to come from Apple and Spotify and YouTube, but you want to be everywhere. It's a mistake to not be and you're, if you don't have video, you can still put your show on YouTube. Just use like the thumbnail of your cover art or create a quick graphic in Canva for each episode and then embed the audio into that still image and then upload it to YouTube. That way you're at least on YouTube and people will still listen. They, If it's not video, they can't watch it, but they'll listen to the podcast on YouTube. I have a lot of friends who listen to podcasts on YouTube. So even if there's no video, you want to be there as well. And it's just a great rule of thumb to be everywhere. Don't limit your reach. All right, mistake number five, and this is a big one. This even comes before all this other stuff is not having a target audience or a niche. 
or a goal. So before you even get started, or maybe you have started, but you're a little bit lost, you really want to narrow down who this show is for, who you're talking to, why you're talking to them, and what you hope to achieve. You wouldn't sail without a compass. You wouldn't go on a road trip without a map. You need to know kind of why you're doing this and and what you're hoping to achieve with this audience. Maybe you're trying to sell your services. Maybe you're just trying to get as many downloads as possible to monetize through ads. Maybe you want to entertain people. Maybe you want to make them laugh. Maybe you want to make them cry. Maybe you want to educate. You need to figure this all out in advance, and then it's going to help give you that roadmap for the many episodes to come. And make sure you know what you're talking about. That's the whole niche thing. Don't be talking about like baseball statistics if you're uh, a, a golfer. You know, you need to focus in on what you can do best, maybe mixing your hobby with uh, your nine to five or your passion with your nine to five and really just hone in on that and get clear on the who, what, where, when, and why. Okay, number six, interrupting guests or speaking over them. I'm working on this. It's hard. Even little acknowledgements like, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You want to let them talk and you don't want to be thinking about what you're going to say next. And it is really difficult, but you want to maybe jot things down on a piece of paper while they're talking. If you don't want to forget about something that you want to say, but the best shows, in my opinion, the best interviews, you're actually listening to what the guest says. You're not speaking over them. You're not worried about what you're going to say next. Next, you're listening, and then when they're done speaking, you respond based on what they just said, and you build that rapport, you build that conversation, and then you can drop in your question and and take the conversation, guide the interview from there. I'm getting better at this. It's not easy. I don't interrupt a ton, but I laugh a lot or I acknowledge, and, and I'm trying to only do that strategically, and I think you should do that too. All right, rounding home here, the next one, was this six or seven? I think this is six, is not doing guest research. It's inviting people on your show and not being prepared, not knowing who they are, what they do for a living, the name of their podcast, the name of their company, what their company does. You need to do thorough research, and you should only invite guests on that you find interesting or that you think that you find interesting and that your audience can get some value from. You don't want to just interview someone because they're like a big shot or because they're they're really successful at what they do. If you're not interested and you didn't do your research, it's going to show. And so you need to be prepared. Put in one to two hours per guest. It's not that difficult, but make sure you do thorough research. If you're not, it's going to show and that's going to negatively affect your show. Okay, and lastly, not promoting yourself. And this is hard for a lot of people, but you want to let people know about your show and your newsletter in real life, friends and family. You want to tell people about it. You want to have a website. You want to have social media and you want to let people know about your show. It's not going to grow if you don't tell people or maybe you're buying ads or whatever you're doing to promote your show. You need to be your biggest fan. And if you really believe in what you're doing and you're trying to grow the podcast, uh, people want to know about it. I always hear people saying like, if, if you have a unique gift or a unique story or a unique podcast or proposition and you don't share that with people, you're doing yourself and everybody else a disservice because there's people out there that are craving the information and the education about the stuff that you're talking about. And so by telling them and by putting it out there, you're actually helping them because people want to know how to start a podcast. People want to know um, how to improve their SEO. People want to know how to shoot a free throw. And by you promoting yourself and getting it out there, they're going to come across that material. And if it resonates with them, they're going to be grateful. You're going to have helped them. You're going to have helped yourself. And so you got to promote your show. It's weird. It can be awkward, but the more you do it and you do it in your own style, you don't have to like copy anyone, but you just want to get comfortable promoting yourself because if you don't do it, nobody else is. Avoid these mistakes and you're going to be on your way to growing your show, to having a more successful show and to building a larger podcasting community around your messaging. If you're already a seasoned podcaster, chances are you aren't doing all of these to the best of your ability. So you can easily make a few adjustments and you're just going to be putting yourself in a better position to hit your podcasting goals and to help people along the way. And if you need help with your podcast, head on over to the podcasthaven.com. 
That's my company. That's my podcast production company and the ecosystem that this podcast falls into. Fill out the contact form. Ask us some questions. Are you looking to start a podcast? Are you looking to, are you, do you need help with editing? Do you need help with video? Shoot us a message. I'll get back in touch with you and we can have a chat and I can hopefully help you reach your podcasting goals. We've got a great team. We've got a lot of great resources and a lot of great experience in podcasting. That's the podcasthaven.com. Keep listening, keep engaging and keep creating. I'm out.